I'm back. Um, this is, um, I wanted to put this on because this is my Tom Petty dress under here. When I went to the Gore to see Tom Petty, this is my Tom Petty dress. Um, as a matter of fact, that's the first concert I'm thinking. That's the very first concert that my son and I ever went to together, rock concert. Um, but now I just use it, wear it like as a round the house dress. Um, my mother actually sent me this. I don't know if you guys can see it for my um, graduation present when I graduated and got my bachelor's. And you see, it's very, very fragile. And I don't wear it very often unless, you know, it's a special occasion or something. And I just kind of throw it around my arms or something because I'm not really sure. As you can see, it's very, very white and very, very clean. And it's got these shiny, dingly things on it. I, um, I don't know how to clean it. I'm afraid to take it to the dry cleaner. I'm not really sure. Well, maybe I'll take like a little teeny piece that's not conspicuous and try to wash it. But as you can tell, it's, it's so very, very fragile. I don't put it close to my face so no makeup will get on it. I don't put it on my head. But um, I love this. One of my favorite, favorite articles of clothing. You know, and it's so cool that my mom would really know my um, taste. I hope she she won't go on YouTube, but maybe, you know, one of my sisters will show her and she can see that because she'll probably think I'm on television or something. Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, difference between, I think I touched on before, that um, leaving to go to England would, they would probably actually have left from New York. But there was just too much difficulty in, it would have been too much difficulty in riding a um, cross-country trek like that from Missouri to New York. And it would have taken too much time. Wherein all he had to do was jump on the river. They live in Missouri anyway, so all he had to do was jump in on the river and go. <laughs> you know, it could be there very quickly. And how I, um, the, um, someone comes from England, uh, one of the, um, not a servant, more or less a, re I want to say retainer, more or less a major domo of the uh, castle. He is, um, retired at this point, but he's the one that comes to America to take, you know, the male character back to, um, well, his original intention is to take him back to England. But what he does is he ends up staying and taking care of their farm and stuff. And, you know, and they end up going along. And how, what I did was I had him being dropped off, the ships um, being dropped off in Boston. And then I have the ships go on a spice run, which would make them be in the islands, which would make them you know, pick them, make more sense for them, pick them up in New Orleans. See, those are the things you have to go through in your mind. Writers, um, you're, you have to figure things out. But like I said before, not every single detail, but things like that, you have to, you know, make them make sense. So of course, if they're on a spice run, that that's where they would pick them up from. Um, so it's hard to figure that out. Um, also too, I wanted to speak on uh, all right. On when she lived in Georgia, when she lived on the plantation, like I said, she was pretty much a, um, um, you know, a slave with a lot of privileges, pretty much raised in the, you know, big house with the, um, um, uh, with the, um, master's son and daughter. And, um, you know, so she has this, um, she lives this privileged life there. She doesn't really have any money, money of her own kind of money. She just, whatever she wants, she just pretty much gets. Um, in Missouri, she lives kind of an in-between life. Um, they're really, everyone's really poor there, actually. So yeah, it's a big giant farm and he's very wealthy and, you know, she, you know, you know, uh, but she does her own housework. She does the light housework. She does her own cooking and she does like her, the light, you know, washing dishes when it's just her and her family and little dusting and that kind of thing. They have the women from the town do the, um, 
um, the women from the town come in and do the heavy, you know, sheets and pillowcases and that kind of work. And then plus she has her two friends that live on the farm with her. And that's something else I want to touch on her friends in New Orleans. Like I said, it's the first time she's been around other mixed couples. Well, no, when she lives in Georgia, um, her lover, his little group of friends, they all have mistresses, you know, most of them. And, um, they kind of associate but the thing is she doesn't really have um her and the mammy the plantation of the mammy are very close she practically raised her um she's very close to the um, plantation owner's um daughter it's very close to her but she doesn't really have but because of her status she doesn't really have any female friends like that to speak of she doesn't really like she does on the farm on the farm she does because you know they all have to work together you know they pass each other's children's clothes down they sew together they can together it's just so much work that you need a whole village to run a household and plus she has a huge house um, they also have their little own um, satellite homes and grounds and things to um, take care of. One of the women, the Irish uh, lady has, <laughs> does she have six or seven? I think she has seven kids or six or something like that. So she has a house full. So they all have their hands full. The women in town, um, the woman that owns the boarding house, you know, she's well to do. But it's more, and the, of course, the store owner, he's, um, his wife is well to do. But it's more or less um, big fish, little pond kind of thing when she's in Missouri. Of course, she's the richest woman there, but there everyone's poor. And she does actually do a lot of her, the townspeople are poor. And she does a lot of her own um, housework. When she gets, and she doesn't really, reason why I was so excited about writing the New Orleans stuff was to, it was a chance to show how, um, uh, wealthy he is and how she enjoys um, the privileges of, of, you know, a wealthy, you know, of, of um, having the um, the backing, I guess is the word I'm trying to use of a very, very um, wealthy man. She That's when she realizes how, you know, really wealthy he is. And she ends up living in a very, um, he won't let her do any housework. Well, his idea is this. He wants her to be very comfortable when they get to England and they're going to live a certain lifestyle when they're in England and he wants her um, very comfortable with handling um, uh, a staff of, like I spoke before, of her children being um, the uh, difference, the um, divisions between the very rich and the very poor. Um, when she's in Missouri, she takes care of her own baby. You know, because, well, number one, she likes him. So she, you know, wants to take her home baby and she takes care of her little adopted daughter. Also, in New Orleans, it's a different thing because they both have maids. And, you know, and another thing that um I remember I said yesterday was um about when the first time her kids are gone somewhere and she's not with them. Um, I took that from something that happened to me actually in my life. Uh, my son was two and I had to, it's time to go back to work. Um, so what I did was um, like a week or two before I went back to work, that's when I took him to um, nursery school. And, um, you know, so in case, you know, something happened, I didn't want to be at a new job and him at a new school at the same, you know, and our first time we'd been separated, except when he went to, you know, his aunts, you know, or visit his cousins and stuff like that. It was the, you know, we would, we hadn't really been separated. And, um, you know, I want to give him a chance to adjust. I didn't want to be at a new job and have to leave a new job and go, <laughs> you know, to pick him up or something like that. Um, he adjusted very well. But I remember the day that um, his first day of nursing school, I basically walked the floor. So I, you know, I was like, okay, should I, is it time to go? Yeah, it's time to go pick him up. And I was trying to make sure he stayed there at least, you know, um, um, I think I dropped him off about maybe nine-ish. And I think I went back and got him maybe 2.30ish. I wanted him to have like a full day there. So he realized that, you know, he was going to be there a while. And um, 
And I remember just, you know, because I had nothing to do. I had taken care of a, a little one and a toddler, and that's a full-time job. So I hadn't really, um, so I really missed him. And I basically just walked the floor, and finally a friend of mine uh, came over, and I was like, let's go get him. <laughs> let's go get him. So um, I wanted to, so just to show you how life, you know, imitates fiction, whatever that saying, the cliche is. Um, also, what I wanted to do was to, um, like I was saying, she really didn't have, um, when she lived in Georgia, she really didn't have a lot of, um, I'm looking at my script, I guess you would call it. Um, I really, she didn't really have, um, a lot of friends of like a BFF in Georgia, um, besides the plantation owner's, um, um, daughter. And, um, she, in Missouri, of course, like I said, she's very, very close to the women there in the town. Um, and the uh, women that live on the, you know, on the farm with her, it's, it's going to be difficult doing this without the stuff shining in my face, but I can't see. But one of the things I wanted to do when she, um, where the devil is it? When she goes to New Orleans, she, um, they live in a very, very big house. Oh, here's something that's funny. Um, I told you I use every single sheet of paper. This I had tried to print out the instructions of my um for my camera. I think I mentioned before my son bought me this really nice camera in um uh, Osaka, and it had no English uh instructions. So I had to go on the to the uh, website get them, and I had started to print them out. And I'm thinking, why am I doing this? You know, don't that's wasting paper. So I decided that. So that's what the, that is. I started. You know, I used the other side of it. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a tree hugger from way back. Um, and what I did was I um did a description of. She has her friends over. Basically, um, to that house, she lives in a beautiful mansion that he's um rented for her. Um, and her, the women that she meets there, you know, it's the first time she's associated with, you know, couples like her and, um, her man. Um, one of them is named Blue because her, um, her, uh, lover is named, um, is a, a Colonel, Colonel Calhoun. I don't know if he was in the cavalry or what, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, cause I can't see, but the glasses show, um, he basically, she was given to him as, um, a gift when he was like eight and she was like six. Of course, there was no sex going on then. They were still children. And her name, the reason her name is blue is because, um, she, uh, he, they, they, her, his parents give her him this present and say, okay, you can name her and he's a little boy so he i don't know she might, maybe she was wearing something blue and so he named her blue um the next um woman that she is uh, my character my lead character associates with is named glory um she is the lover of a um gambler kind of a doc holiday sort of um a character he's a um you know, he travels around, gambles. She had, they had actually met in a casino. She was, um, an entertainer there. And, um, you know, he got into a fight one night with, you know, somebody who accused him of cheating, which he wasn't, you know, and his name is Maxwell Vaughn. And, um, she, Glory kind of, you know, just leaves with him one night, just, Lopes, <laughs> you know, they just basically, you know, leave and they live a different kind of life of uh, uh, Colonel and Blue. Um, the interesting thing is that um, on one hand, they, as a couple, my two main characters, the lady and the man, they, um, one night they'll entertain the, you know, these gentlemen with uh, their wives. And then on another night, they will entertain them with uh, their uh, mistresses. So it gets kind of, you know, complicated, but it's, it's, it's a d whole different dynamic, but you, you'll see when you read the stuff. Um, so then that's Glory. Um, the other girl is, 
um, named Josepha, and she is the uh, mistress of a, a man that uh, owns a lumber yard or something. I can't remember what I made up, but I think that's what happens. Um, also, she's one of the women who she's more, uh, she's, um, you know, the Colonel and Blue are like an old married couple. They've been together 40 some years. Um, um, Glory and her man are more or less these exciting people that travel all around and, you know, and, and go from place to place. They live a vagabond uh, lifestyle. But the other girl, more or less, um, she more or less revels in this uh, because she's been brought up. This is her, what she's been brought up and groomed to do. So basically she's been sold by her, brought up and, and groomed and whatever, and pretty much sold, um, might as well say, by her mother to um, for this position. And so she's very, very much of a snob. Um, she wanted the scene, I kind of like, she, um, they have a, you know, dinner, supper and a musical evening. And um, she decides that, you know, after the musical evening, after dinner, after supper, she changes clothes for the musical evening. She changes gowns. Now, back in that day, you entertained from way in the morning to way at night. And women, sometimes women, you know, you want you wore one thing to the barbecue, you wore one thing to um, supper, and then you wore wear something else for the ball. So you take all these dresses with you when you when you left because you were gone all day. Um, and she goes upstairs and changes clothes for the musical part of the evening. And I kind of thought, okay, well, that shows what a, what a snob she is, but she's, um, this is what she's been groomed for. This is what she's been uh, raised for. So this is like her destiny. Um, the last girl, because I was trying to, um, think that, you know, I was beginning to think, okay, these, all these women love being with these, you know, white men and, and, and all this stuff like that. So I thought I really need a character who isn't happy about this and the last character actually i changed her name her name was um ruby but i changed it to um desiree because i thought that's my niece's name and i thought uh perhaps she'd have a more french name you know because you just after a while you're you're you're, you're there's so many names in your brain you know you want to um change that kind of stuff around you don't want everybody that's named to start with the same letter you don't want the same number of syllables in um the names so what i did was i changed her name to desiree that's something i caught um she's not very happy in her situation she's in the same situation as the other girl who's been raised you know in order to be um the mistress of a rich wealthy white man but she's not really happy about it she'd much rather be just married to a regular you know, black guy, you know, with a, with a job or something, you know, she doesn't want to. And it's one scene, one scene that she's um sitting there with the other ladies. The gentlemen are inside, you know, smoking cigars and ha take it, and having brandy. And the ladies are out um taking um the air when they're waiting for the musicians to, you know, come back, the quintet to come back um and start playing music. They're out on the, on the lanai and a young black guy walks by and um she kind of looks at him kind of wistfully you know and and then the twist in it is that she she's actually pregnant by her um and i can't remember what he does um i know one of them runs the um let's see josephus man runs the um is the heir to a um um lumber yard and i don't remember what her man does if i even mentioned it i don't know if i did or not so those are the women that she associates with in new orleans i'm thinking um maybe that'll be it maybe i'll start brainstorming out while i take my break little break here i'll brainstorm as to if there's anything else i need to say about um autumn maybe a, a little um post note and then i'm gonna start talking about um the new book so um yeah i think that's what i i'll do and then we'll get on the subject of the new book because it really is time to let this kind of let this go i might even read the last uh page so we'll see <laughs>